Now, why we need a data set API actually? We already have uh, RDD, which were working fine with some of cases. But when the shuffling is required for joining a multiple data sets or relation data sets, so it was too complex to manage. And there was also a performance overheads over there. So that's why we switched to data set API, which have, which is a somehow similar to data frame uh, with all schema informations are there, like which other string is there. And we can also select the particular values. And it's also have a good performance rather than the RDD. So uh, why data set? It's a strongly typed collection of a domain specific object. So domain specific object, a domain means a table. Okay, you can take as a domain as a table. Suppose we have a two tables. One is department and one is person. Person, person is your personal detail about that. So the personal details, it can have your name, your age, your address information, your gender, okay? And department can have your department ID, salary, department group, uh, and, and other informations also. So these informations together make a domain a specific group of object, okay? So now you can group specific domain object externally, okay? So it's a strongly typed collection of domain rather than this is not there in the data frame. So that we will discuss. So data set transform in the parallel using a function or relational. Operations. So operations, it also support transformation and action. All other things are same, but over the umbrella, it is doing a lot of physical planning and logical planning also. So data set, we transform in a parallel using a functional relational operations. Relational operations can be your joints, okay? Can be your uh, you're doing a joins, union, and Cartesian product. So it can be your relation operations, depend upon that. Functional can have like a select statement, filtering some data, grouping some data. So data set and data frame are correlated with each other. How? Like a data set can be a untyped view, which is called data type, data frame. So data set is a row of a data frame. So specific row we are providing with all of the schema informations. And data set of a row is called data frame here. So I will show you an example. How can you relate both of things? It, it supports both of the transformation and actions. And transformations is, is a lazy evaluation when a transformation happens on a particular data set, it will produce a new data set. Okay, it will not do a changes in an old data set, rather than it, it will reproduce a new data set. Okay, if your data set got failed in the middle because of a node issues or node failure, then it will reproduce that data set with the older data set that we have discussed. And action is a trigger of computation which will return your result to your driver program. So these concepts are similar, similar to RDD and data frame we have discussed. What is the difference that we are going to discuss now? Transformation also includes uh, map, filter, select, aggregate. Aggregate is to the, do the group by. So if we, we are performing a group by operations, and we are supposed to performing a group by average. So you want to do the average with the group by. So you can use the aggregate there. First you use a group by there, then aggregate. Then in this bracket, you will use average of 
particular age. So group by with aggregate is used for aggregate functions to apply. And both are, when you're doing the aggregate function, it requires a group by. As simple as in a SQL also. Actions are count. You're doing some count on that data. You want to show the schema information and show your data or writing some data to your file system. So program will look similar here, but the internal things are different. So data frame, which is a data set of a row. So particular row information, how you are now defining an alias, giving alias to a particular row, which is a data set. And it's a untyped API data frame was, but now the data set is a type API. So now you have a type information also. So data set follow these evaluation computation, which are not triggered. Okay, because it will what you, what it will do internally, it will save whatever the transformation you will do in only a Scala object. Okay, if you are programming in Scala, if you are programming in Java, then it will store that in a Java object. But whenever you will call an action statement, then it it will trigger that. Um, it means it will compile your that program. So. For Java, I name it, uh, the name of the RDD will be new RDD.java and Scala will be the dot Scala. Internally, a data set which represent a logical plan. I think we have already discussed about the logical plan, physical plan in the RDD class. Now, logical plan, what is it? Logical plan is making a graph of the older RDDs, the dependencies, what are the dependencies over there, what are the sources there. So mapping of a dependency informations together make a logical plan that describe your computation required to produce data. So all over the dependent R dependency RDDs and your current RDD also. So when your action is invoked, spark Query optimizer, firstly check, optimize that logical plan, okay, check the dependencies are resolved or not, and then generate a physical plan. Physical plan is plan on which the actual program is running for efficient execution, okay. So that will run, suppose, uh, take an example here. I do have uh, some data, okay, which in a CSV format. I have, I have now um, loaded my data into RDD or into data frame. Then I am doing some map, in, map transformation over there and then filter transformation over there. So the map and filter transformations are not happened individually. So they're not firstly like data, set, data particular data is loaded by that function, map function, then the particular data is loaded by the filter operation. So they totally, they will work together in action statement. They will take, call that particular data once and make operations once. So all over the, these transformations are part of a fight, uh, the narrow dependencies. And to explore the logical plan, how can we explore what is the logical plan, plan created? We can also check in data set using a explain. So we can use this statement, data set dot explain. It will show the logical plan to us that I have shown earlier class. So you can see the uh, older PPTs. I have explained the schema information over there. We can get that with the explain here and print schema in data frame. For domain specific object, we require encoder. So encoder is a different thing here rather than data frame. Encoder map your domain specific informations to your Spark Scala internal 
type system. So type system is uh, if it's an integer type or a string type or array or a different collection. So it will map your information there. So this is a difference between the data frame and data set. Data set is the encoder is different here. The query optimization execution is similar, but the data frame type is equal to the data set of row. Now here is an example here. So we have a table or schema. Name is a person having these columns: name, age, gender, salary, and department ID. So first step is to import a data set class. Because if you if you, in your program you are not importing a data set class, it will throw error. So you are using a Spark 2.0 first, firstly, and then you are importing a data set class. So this is your uh, data set class import uh, syntax, and then you are going to read a barcode file. Why barcode file? Barcode file is a columnar based file which have your type informations. Okay, so it have your type informations similar to a your uh, similar to a file, your SQL file, <coughs> your table have your your type informations. If it is a timestamp, then it, it your type will be a timestamp. If your value is a ID, suppose, and name is a string, age would be your integer. So now I'm reading a parquet file here by using spark dot read dot parquet and then the path of a particular file. If it is in HDFS, you have to provide a HDFS URI that, that I have shown earlier. And then I'm making alias as person. So it will be now created uh, alias internally as a person, but the data frame name is a pupil. So I will access my data frame with the pupil, but the schema information I can check with the person. I can also do the map transformations. Suppose I am selecting or the name of particular. Uh, so all of the names, that means all of the name column I am selecting of a person and storing to a different data frame that name is names. Now I am selecting a column from a data set. I can do also this thing. I can also select with the people and I am selecting a particular age. So that age, all of the age values will be stored in an age column. I can also do the filter or incremental there. Filter I can use a simple filter there and then Similar, it will work like underscore name, top name is equal to uh, Naveen. Okay, so it will select particular value all over the Naveen row, and I will get all the information about Naveen. I mean, name, age, gender, salary, and department ID. And I can also increment the values. Suppose I have to increase the Naveen age to 10 more. I can, have, I can also age, increment the age. So this people age plus 10 will increase all over the rows age value. So this is a good example. Uh, how can I show you? How can you make a transformation? And you have this type of data set. So this is your schema, and this this should be your tip, uh, your code. This should look look like your code. Now we have this program. So can I, uh, do you have any idea of what we are trying to achieve here? So we are using a filter here for filtering the age should be greater than 30 and that 
people who have the age more than 30, I'm joining with the department because I want to get the salary at the end by his aggregate function I'm using. So I want to select the average people's salary with the maximum people age. So I, my people, so people, you can take it as an example of a person we have taken, not have your salary. So I require a department, the department have as your salary column, and I'm joining with the department, data frame or data set, and then that data set, I'm selecting on the basis of department ID. A pupil department ID is equal to department dot ID. Then it will do a group by with name and a sender. So department name, but person meant people gender. And then I'm aggregating the average people salary with the maximum people age. Yeah, so I'm selecting the average salary of maximum people of age, which you have greater than 30 age, and grouped by department name and gender. So I think this gives you a pretty much good idea about the data frame.